Welcome to Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. And hi there, I'm Jack Ward, your longtime host of the Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio theater. And I'm your uh, slightly less longtime co-host, but still a reasonable <laughs> length of time, uh, David Alt. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, is your weather now autumnal, Jack? Autumnal is a wonderful word. I appreciate that. Yes. Thanks for you for using that. <laughs> it's starting to cool down a little bit. It was quite hot with very little respite, and then suddenly uh, September brought us a bunch of rain. And we're finding the nights are cooling down much better. Mm. Global warming seems to be changing things up a whole lot. Uh, for example, the vineyards all around Nova Scotia were basically wiped out. <sighs> Ouch. They were all burned down. There's very little grape, very little wine for th- this year that's going to be bottled. Wow. It's quite sad. Although the, the apples did well, the vineyards did very, very poorly. How's the weather down there? Yeah, well, we had uh, a very strange a very strange year, really. We had a very, a very cold spring followed by a very hot summer and now that we've had september into october it's cooling down it's uh we're we're getting nightly lows of five degrees and sometimes the occasional frost which is very nice but yeah it's certainly getting back into a sort of normal rhythm after a very crazy year and it'll just well we'll have to see what the winter brings as well yeah there was some concern at one point that global warming might change the main stream that comes in yes the jet stream the jet that keeps stream. us that keeps us a little bit warmer and, that's right uh, and not, not siberia yes and not not <laughs> moscow or something like that um that's right yes but we'll so hope, well we'll hope see that doesn't happen <laughs> I don't know if if everything warms up by two degrees, then if we get cooled down by two degrees, then we're you know we're we've oh, broken yeah. even. That's fair <laughs> enough. That's a good point. Keeping a little cooler means you may not get completely covered with water too. It like freeze a little more. <laughs> well, mm, yeah. probably not. <laughs> we'll see. Have to say about that one. <laughs> well, tonight we have cued in our project the first two episodes of Justin McLaughlin's exciting series EOS Ten, and it all begins right here on the Sonic Society. Huh. Okay. Big. Um. Hi, excuse me. I. Hi, um. Okay. Hi, can you. Uh. Excuse me. Hi. I, I, I'm looking for the infirmary. Can. And, uh, okay. Um. Primary. Docking ring. To airlock. To corridor C. To level 10 promenade. Then take a right at the. Gimzachstan? I don't see a Gimzachstand. I don't even know what a Gimzachstand is. Hi, can you help me? Uh, no, of course not. Huh. Maybe that guy, I assume, can help? Hi, uh, sir, can... Ma'am. Sir? Definitely, sir. Sorry, I, I'm looking for the infirmary. Right, yes, in the Gimja stand would be... Oh. So that's Gimja. That is disgusting. could be Tellarian flu. Have you been to Tellarian Prime lately? Not this rotation. Oxinian's disease, perhaps? Should I remove my pants so you can check? No, thank you. I don't mind. It's okay. It will take but a second. Go back to the kitchen, Levi. (sighs) 
Oh, hi, I'm... Sign in at the kiosk with your name, species ID, and station identifier, please. No, I'm looking... I, I'm sorry, I'm Dr. Dalius. Uh, nice to meet you, Johns? Jane. Nurse Jane Johns. Really? Good. Re- really, really uh, nice to meet you, uh, Lieutenant Johns. Nurse uh, Lieutenant Johns. Jane is fine. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for Dr. Ervidian. Oh, you... He's been waiting for you. That a good thing? No, <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> Dr. Vidian, Dr. Dalius is here to see you. Dr. Dalius? Dr. 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 Dalius? Uh... Finally! I've been waiting for you. Waiting for you to come replace me. Come to take my job. Come to undo my life's work? (laughs) Well, not as long as I'm standing here on my own feet. He just passed out. Uh Uh-huh. He do that a lot? Uh Uh-huh. Welcome back. Something hurt? Yes. Everything. Also, I am sober. You're welcome. This is unacceptable. Do you have any idea how high your blood alcohol was? Is this a game? Would you like me to guess? 0.62. Child's play. You dosed me for that? Okay. Two questions. What were you drinking and how are you alive? Ceruliac ale. The Alliance banned Ceruliac ale more than 100 rotations ago. Oh, grow up. And the being alive part? Postnatal hepatic mutagenic resequencing. You altered your genes? Your liver? To metabolize more alcohol. Tried to keep up, Doctor. Genetic engineering was banned. Yes, yes, by the Alliance more than a hundred rotations ago. Two hundred, actually. Are you always this prudish? How... Sensible? Sage? Joyless. Actually, you seem like a joyless person. Very sad. And your forehead is much too large for a man of your stature. Okay. I've neutralized the alcohol. You're fine. So now we... No, I'm not. I'm sober, you miscreant. We can finally take care of this. And this would be what? My transfer orders. Commanding me... No. No, thank you. You've come to cast me out? Well, think again. Wait, doctor... To you, miscreant, I say suck. I'm not leaving. I don't care what the orders say. Dr. Ervidian, if you would just- No! Be gone, petulant little fly. You're nasty, disturbing, and uncomfortable. And you bother me. I will not be undone by the likes of you, especially not while sober. (sighs) I think that went well. Hi. Hello. Sorry, I I was just walking by. Would would you like me to close the door so you can have some privacy? Oh, no. Nurse Johns opened it, and she'll be very angry if you close it. I see. Uh, But you're not wearing any pants. And you're quite obviously from Aryan 7. I am a rule de l'atre Levithian III, 82nd Prince of the High Command of Helisanki, protector of the sacred Asmuthian bones, and heir to the Diamond Throne. And yes... From Arian 7. How could you tell? We look much like humans. Not with your pants off, you don't. Prince? Deposed. I was toppled by insurgents from the southern continent. Ghastly creatures with no sense of decorum or appreciation for the finer things in life. Also, they have spikes on their backs. Unseemly. I will return to Arian 7 one day and reclaim my birthright. Until then... I live here, on EOS 10, and work in the kitchen. You're a cook. Dishwasher. For now. How wonderful. Uh, or a a rule. Everyone calls me Levi. Levi. About your pants. Yes. I'm waiting for an exam from Nurse Johns. I see. 
Until then, uh, why don't we close this door? <laughs> Lieutenant. Jane is good. Jane, uh, you have a patient in exam three? I do. A Levi from Aryan 7? Ugh, he's still here? And he's not wearing any pants. That's typical. Is he really a prince? Deposed. How'd he end up in the kitchen? He arrived on a transport full of refugees one day, and the next thing we knew, he ousted the plongeur in a coup d'etat and installed himself as his own marmiton. He took over for the guy who cleans the plates and forks and made him wash pots and pans instead. Exactly. You know French? I grew up in Paris, actually. The French was Levi's doing, too. Once he secured his position on the dish line, he was able to use his influence to institute a strict brigade de cuisine system with the help of newly formed coalition of the bussers from Food Court Delta. The bussers are on his side? Just the Food Court Delta ones. I think he promised them a place in his new kingdom. In the kitchen. Or maybe just longer bathroom breaks. Both seem plausible. What's wrong with him? He's absolutely, completely, and totally insane. I meant physically? Nothing. He's a hypochondriac. Good to know. Can we uh, talk about Dr. Ervidian? Not a hypochondriac. Not what I meant. But also absolutely, completely, and totally insane. Also, good to know. How often is he drunk? Hello? Sorry, you threw me. Most people just ask when he'll be sober next. I didn't know it was this bad. Well... (laughs) What was that? I don't know. Hold on. Some kind of explosion lower plant ring. Are there any people in that section? Three. Let's go. What happened? Power conduit he was working on blue. The, the computer doesn't have his bio on file. What is he? No idea. He just started. He's not wearing an ID. He just started today. He's got four arms. No one can slap an ID bracelet around one of them. Do you recognize this species? No. Is he? Is he conscious? Uh, I, I can't. I can't tell. These vitals. He. He has no vitals. So either he's dead or taking a nap. He's not. Dead. Oh, Jesus. Where? Where did you come from? He's not dead. And it's definitely not sleep. You recognize the species? He's a native of Sigma Upsilon in the Perseus arm. Yes, Q3, if I'm not mistaken. It, it must have taken him forever just to get here. He said he left three rotations ago, hoping to start a new life in the Alliance. Oh, well, good thing we put him in a furnace and blew him up then. <gasps> this is a fourth generation zero point reactor? Yes, wonderful. Now, do we actually plan to treat this man sometime soon? I'd love to if I could tell exactly how to do that. I I can't even find his heart. That's because he doesn't have one. Oh. Well, that explains it. His species enters a protective neurogenic stasis when confronted with severe injury. You'll need to revive him to diagnose his injuries. 55 cc's of neuropinephrine. 55 cc's? Into the upper right thoracic quadrant. Quick now! Okay. Here it goes. I'm getting some neuroelectrical activity in the... Well, we'll just call it a brain. You can have a brain down there, right? He's coming out of stasis. I think I'm, I'm seeing a sinus rhythm. I mean, it's a rhythm, so that's generally better than no rhythm, I think. Looking at general percussive trauma, no real internal damage that I can All right, let's, uh, let's get him back to the infirmary and prep for a full diagnostic scan. Keep him sedated until we get a full idea of what's going on. Dr. Arvidi in... Where'd he go? Anything interesting out that window? Stars. Lots and lots of stars. So... no. Can I help you? You were good today. I'm good every day. Really? Yeah, I thought so too. Especially when you were passed out on the floor earlier. Genius. For your information. And when your head hit the exam table. I had... Shut up. Everything under complete control. No one asked you to intervene. Are you uh, familiar with alcohol poisoning? Clinically, yes. Also, personally. Would you just get this over with? What? Damn it, man. Stop... Stop driving the dagger in slowly, stab me in the heart, and get it over with. Okay, first of all, ew. Second, will you just read the transfer orders? 
This says you're to become my new chief of surgery. That's right. That would make you... Technically, you're second in command. I've never had a chief of surgery before. Well, now you do. You're not here to replace me. Not as far as I know. Why not? I'm sorry? Why would they not replace me? I deserve to be replaced. I'm a derelict, I'm an alcoholic, and I have no bedside manner to speak of. Well, now that we've gone over your CV... I've also been seriously thinking of diverting prescription narcotics for my own use. Would you think Tordali or Simsilia would have a higher street value? And why would you... It seems fun. Don't be stupid, Dr. Dalius. Tordali, I think. First, Simsilia, obviously. And second, I wasn't trying to... I'm not stupid. If they're sending you here, but they're not replacing me with you, there must be something wrong with what? you. What? It's simple logic. I'm awful. Anyone would be better than me. That leaves us with the question of what, then, is so wrong with you, Dr. Dalius? There's nothing wrong with me. Must be. There isn't. Has to be, obviously. I assure you... Do you have a mental instability? Talesian cowing syndrome, perhaps? Yes. Yes, now I see it. The signs are everywhere. What signs? Like you've never noticed that sloping forehead in the mirror. My forehead does not slope. And and besides... That is not even a symptom of Talisian... Then what is wrong with you? Nothing. Then why aren't you replacing me? Because that is not the plan. Ah! Ha! Ah, Gaha, what? So there's a plan. Was I to be let in on this plan? Yes. Eventually. Probably. Okay, fine. Look, I was sent here to watch you mostly and if absolutely necessary yes to take over so i was right no no you were not right central command has a lot of respect for you and and honestly a lot invested your failure here would be an, an embarrassment oh please come on the great Dr. Orvidian, pioneer of frontier medicine, brilliant xenomorphologist, cure of the barat athian plague, savior to millions? That sounds like my CV. Uh-huh. Special skills, egotism, egocentricity, narcissism. Those all mean the same thing. Caught that, did you? I dislike you. So you've said, look, the truth is, I think you're scaring them, the council, a little. Rubbish. How quickly we forget the pharmaceutical microxenobiology conference on Narioka 3. I've not forgotten. It was simply blown way out of proportion. Really? Of course. Then they didn't find you behind a poster on the effects of Simproson on late-stage cyranosis unconscious and naked? Half naked. Which half? Shut up. And none of your business. Should I move on to the pediatric xenomorphologist section meeting on Starbase Delta? Now that was not entirely my fault. Did you see the video? There's a video. Should I keep going? How many conferences did you go to last rotation? You're not as humorous as you seem to think you are. Well, then why don't I pull up the video and we can both have a laugh? All right! Enough! What is it you want from me? Just your cooperation. What's in it for me? If all goes well, you get to keep your post and retire into bourgeois senility without anyone ever being the wiser. That's it. I'm nice to you, and you don't run home and tell mommy and daddy. This has nothing to do with me. My job is to help you get your practice back on track so you can keep your command and not embarrass yourself in the dozens of now senior officers you stood on to get here. And how do you intend to do that? Sobriety would be a good place to start. No. Nope. No. Are you out of your tiny monkey brain? My brain is not tiny. We can test that. Look, in a few months, I either tell Central Command you're fit for duty and I'm out of your hair, or we haul you back to Earth on a shuttle, possibly in a straitjacket. Will there be beverage service on the shuttle? Seriously? Fine. Fine? Yes, fine. I will cooperate with you, you barbarian. Good. We can start with no more Cyrillic ale. God, man. Kind of demon, are you? It's for the best. I suppose. Maybe it is. Bloody expensive, anyway. Doesn't doesn't even taste that good. Great, then. That's settled. Where is it? Doctor? Fine. In the drawer. Wow. Nice.
nice vintage. Anything else for today? Perhaps you can demonstrate your catheter insertion skills on me. That's always fun. Seems like something you'd be into. Oh, I have a picture of my mother in my quarters. She's drinking a glass of wine. Perhaps you'd like to throw that away as well. Could be a source of temptation. One step at a time, right? Did you happen to pick up a book of platitudes in the station gift shop, or are you just that simple? There's a gift shop. So what does this exactly make you? My sponsor? Guarantor? Underwriter? Why don't, uh, why don't we just start with colleague? I prefer subordinate. I'm still your commanding officer. Of course, absolutely. One who just has to defer to my medical judgment when it comes to his own well-being. So it's come to this. Being browbeaten into sobriety by a central command sycophant with a Neanderthal forehead. There is nothing wrong with my forehead. Of course not. Just be careful where you point it. We don't want you blinding pilots heading for the docking pylons. That would be a disaster. You know, it, it might not seem like it, but I'm actually happy to be here. Do you know how many doctors would, like, seriously kill to have the opportunity to learn from you? I, I had to kill a few myself. Seriously? Like, for real? Okay, I'm just saying that I, I've been looking forward to meeting you for a very long time. Really? You're not just playing to my overinflated ego? That's how you put it, correct? My dad used to read Dr. Irvidian Medicine Man to me when I was little. I love the illustration of you coming down Mount Severon with bushels of Kalinian root under your arms. The loincloth was probably over the top, but... It cures high sex fever. Your loincloth? The Kalinian... I know. That mountain... Is exceptionally dangerous. You risked your life to save the colony. It wasn't all so dramatic as that. Uh, seemed pretty dramatic to a six-year-old. Still does to a... Well... To me. You're 34. How did you know that? I counted the circles around your eyes. Your father. That would be Admiral Dalius, would it not? Yes. Figures. I know you don't believe me, but I want you to succeed, Dr. Ovidian. I really do. So does my father. Well, that's very thoughtful. Thank you. Are we going to kiss now? What? Or do you like to snuggle first? Shall I make some room on my sofa? Okay. You have a very nice ass, Dr. Dalius. Has anyone ever told you? I'm going now. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm sorry. Should we share more feelings first? Is that the appropriate thing? I am... A horrible person? New at this. Have a good evening, Dr. Ovidian. I believe I'm likely a top, but I'm willing to experiment, just so you know. Thanks for sharing. Anytime. EOS 10 is a production of Planet and Pictures. It was created and written by Justin McLaughlin. Original music by Sam Ricci. Our cast is Dan Barry, Justin McLaughlin, Charles Lipper, and Natalie Kutcher. This episode also starred Scott Sparks and Laura Breach. Find us online at www.eos10.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at EOS underscore 10. <laughs>
for you. What you wanted. So is he s- sober? Yes. For how long? Well, let's see. I left his office about seven hours ago, so seven hours and ten minutes. Oh, well, he's doing much better than I would have thought. Mustn't get too close, Dr. Delius. Why, you gonna jump? No, but I am going to push you. Here. What's this? Metalaxitone. It'll help ease the withdrawal symptoms. I know what metalaxitone does. Tell me, Dr. Delius. Do you have anything that will ease the soul mangling tedium of everyday life? Yeah. It's called alcohol. Sorry. Bad joke. Here. You take this? I don't want it. Why the hell not? Because addiction is not just physical attachment. If I'm going to end my dependency, it's going to come from willpower and strength of character, not a pill. (laughs) Willpower and strength of character. You've been sober for half a day, and you're hanging off a ledge 60 meters above the promenade. Momentary setback. And hello, Mr. Supportive. Are you not supposed to be encouraging or something? Yes, that's why I'm telling you to take the metalaxitone. And I told you I don't want it. You're showing all the signs of withdrawal. Am not. R2. Am not. R2! Shut up, Creighton. Really? Just help me off this ledge. Fine. You okay? How humiliating. What? You see the crowd that's gathered? Well, can you blame them? All to watch me plunge to my death? No, actually. You are legendary, like it or not. Stop patronizing me. No, seriously, some of them even made signs. No way they would have gone to that trouble if you were just some dockhand or engineer. Oh, yes. I particularly love the one anticipating joy over my freshly cracked skull. You can read that from up here? You can't. No, I was just hoping you couldn't, you know, you being so... Oh, oh, I, I like the glitter on that one, don't you? Oh, yes. It's spectacular. That is not, however, how you spell jackass. I'm guessing English isn't his first language, seeing as how he's a giant insect. Will you please take the metal axe stone? No! No! I've decided on the matter, and I will thank you not to bring it up again. Do you like suffering? You're a stubborn thing, are you not? I'm not doing anything I wouldn't do for any... What? Nothing. Patient. You were going to say patient. No, I wasn't. You think I'm your patient? Well... Well, what? You're kind of my patient. Oh, I am nothing of the kind, I assure you. Fine. Fine, I'm not your doctor, you're not my patient. Physician, screw thyself. It's heal. The phrase is physician, heal thyself. I'm just trying to help. Your medical advice is completely unnecessary. There's nothing you can tell me that I don't know. Probably true. Definitely true. Okay, so you won't take the metal axetone out of some perverse need for self-flagellation. Whatever, your choice. But then, if that's going to be the case. There is something else I want, though. Something maybe even more important. And that would be? Uh, there's a group that... No! No, 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 no. You don't even know what it is. If you think I'm 12-stepping my way across Eos 10 just to keep a post where I spend my days asking aliens to turn their heads, sometimes plural, and cough you out of whatever passes for a brain behind that huge, shiny forehead. Would you just... No! 
No! Good day, Dr. Dalius. It was. And then I woke up. Dr. Dalius. Hi, Levi. You have to help me. What's the matter? I'm dying. No, you're not. I am. The interface told me so. The interface told you so? Yes. Interface, am I dying? Yes. You see? Interface, what is he dying of? Aggressive cellular senescence. Oh, God. It sounds horrible. Levi, it means aging. Senescence is aging, a perfectly natural, normal, biological process. How is that again? You're fine. You're growing older, just like me, just like every living thing in the universe. You didn't think you'd live forever, did you? Most days, I don't believe I'll live to see dinner. It's always such a surprise. Trust me, you're going to be here for a very, very long time. Can you ballpark this for me? Uh, two, two hundred and fifty more years on the low side? That's it? How old are you now? One hundred and twenty-eight. That's already more than the average human's lifespan. Oh. Oh, I see. You wretched species. I do have sympathy for you. Thank you, Doctor. This does put things in perspective. Glad I could help. Tell me, how do you deal with your ephemerality? One day at a time. Unless you're Dr. Irvidian, excuse me. What is going on in here? He is interfering with my work. I'm just accompanying the doctor on rounds. Is that unusual? Yes, when she also follows me into the bloody bathroom. Okay, that's a little weird. He asked me to do a bioscan, and then the next thing I knew, he'd slipped down the hall and raided the pharmaceutical closet behind my back. Slanderous little wench. Hey. Guys. She makes it sound so treacherous. Then why'd you try to distract me? By asking you to do your job. You would find pushing a few buttons on a scanner mentally challenging, wouldn't you? Okay. Enough. I simply needed to retrieve an antibiotic course for Lieutenant Commander Argon. He's contracted a nasty case of microbial encephalitis, which I suspect he received from a Terulian prostitute. Perhaps you know her, Nurse Jones. Hey. That's it? Check his coat. What? His white coat. When I saw him down the hallway, something was weighing down the left pocket. That's absurd. Let me see the coat. It's nothing. Then let me see it. No. Stop. What are you afraid of? I said no! This... What is this? It's rubbing alcohol. You were... going to drink this? No. Of course not. Don't be ridiculous. The door slid open and I... Well, I was... You wouldn't... You wouldn't understand. Got that right. No, no. That it, that's not... You'd be surprised what I might understand. It was it was just staring at me, mocking me. What was? On the container, that word, alcohol. A-L-C-O-H-O-L, alcohol. I had to have it, I had to take it. I panicked. There, are you happy? Do you have enough insight into my personal psychopathy now? Or shall I share more? Would you like to hear about medical school and my trouble hiding erections in the cadaver lab? Um, not really. Wow, that explains so much. If you'll excuse me. I totally get it, though. Yeah, addiction, alcoholism, they're horrible. No, I mean the cadaver thing. I totally get that. One issue at a time, please. Hey. Oh, good here. I was hoping my day would get worse. How's the drink? I don't know yet. I haven't tasted it. How'd you find me? I told the interface to withhold my location. I put myself in your place, thought about what I would do if I were you. And here we are, level 9 bar. So, less than 24 hours playing nanny to a drunk and you think you have some marvelous insight. I wasn't wrong, was I? If you want to underestimate me, that's fine, but I think you know you're doing it. Wrong, Dr. Dalius. 
It's not you I'm underestimating, it's your estimating the situation that I'm concerned about, which only appears on the surface to be underestimation of you, the person, instead of what it is, accurate estimation of your own estimating ability. You sure you haven't had anything to drink today? I've been staring at this one. Imagining its exquisite effervescence, dreaming of its vivacity, yearning to put it to my lips, and cursing myself for being a weak-minded ninny. It's not just about willpower. (laughs) But come on, when is the last time you've gone this long without a drink? You've made it more than 12 hours. Is that cause for celebration? It's proof that you can do it. Do you know what I've been doing in those 12 hours? Aside from hanging on a ledge above the promenade? Yes. No idea. I've been hoarding. Hoarding? In those 12 hours, I've managed to store away my last 12 bottles of Surliac Ale in various strategic locations across the station. Okay, but... Also, 48 bottles of vodka, 223 cases of wine from the vineyard on Neptune, 117 bottles of Theresian rum, 26 liters of champagne, 116 bottles of amaretto, including a Diaresium vintage, 17 varieties of whiskeys from across the quadrant, three of the last known bottles of Corona beer, and as you know, one bottle of rubbing alcohol. Um, well, uh, that... As I explained earlier, Dr. Dalius... I panicked. But you haven't had a drink. I dislike you. Especially when I'm right, apparently. I've been thinking... Uh Uh-oh. ...about... Shut up. This... group of weak-minded namby-pambies you mentioned this morning. I'm pretty sure I didn't say weak-minded namby-pambies. Well, if one wanted to say... Observe this group in an academic sense, of course. uh, Where might one find them? One would find them in the Habitat section, Level 8, Community Room Alpha, at 1900 hours. Oh, that's unfortunate. What is? I'm busy then. Doing what? Things. Things? Yes. What things? Important things. Once in a lifetime things. Hello? Hi, come on in. Thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm just here. I'm in the wrong room, apparently. I'll I'll, I'll just be going. If you're looking for the SAA meeting, this is it. SAA? Substance Abuse Anonymous. We try to be all-inclusive. Oh, well, then maybe, perhaps, I'm in the right room. Have a seat. We're just getting started with the introductions. Hi. Sorry. Sorry I'm late. No problem. We're just getting started. This is completely and totally unacceptable. Just because Central Command sent you here to babysit me does not mean you can completely and totally invade my semblance of privacy that I have left. Doctor. No. You listen to me in the end at all. I put it up with your ham fist encroachment because that's what required of me. But at this, I draw the line. These meetings are not public spectacles for slack-jawed gawkers. I will not have you reporting my confessions back to the council. And you in the back? Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Hi, uh, everyone. I'm Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Ryan. And I'm an addict. Jackass. EOS 10 is a production of Planet M Pictures. It was created and written by Justin McLaughlin. Original music by Sam Ricci. Our cast is Dan Barry, Justin McLaughlin, Charles Lipper, and Natalie Kutcher. This episode also starred Lena Winter. Find us online at www.eos10.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at EOS underscore 10. It was late June a year ago, and I had just gotten off the plane from a trip to Texas that was one of the most meaningful experiences in my life. I just said a final goodbye to a longtime friend I had met in the audio drama world, Bill Hallwig. Along with his daughter Bailey and a couple of his many friends, Lothar Tuppen, his wife Jan, and Jeffrey Billard, 
We wiped our tears and scattered his ashes at Cross Plains, Texas, the home of Robert E. Howard. Together, the four of us cemented a bond that has only deepened and expressed itself in new audio drama productions and a monthly podcast where we get to look at old-time radio and analyze it. And we talk, Jeff, Lothar, and I, at least through email, almost every day since that fateful weekend. I remember coming off the plane and into Halifax Airport and thinking very clearly, what now, Bill? I didn't want this connection to end. And, and that's when it hit me. Why not a way to have everyone come together? You know, the modern audio drama movement in its current blossoming mirrors the rise of podcasting. The Sonic Society for 15 years now has been blessed with almost 200 different companies and producers and closing on to a thousand different shows weekly and even multiple times a week. So with the help of many people, not the least my amigo brothers Lothar and Jeff, Brian Bocchicchio, Matt Leong, and so many more, and with the kind donations of our partners and my oldest childhood friend, Chris Morano, I'm so happy to announce that we can get together. All of us. And here's how. Come to Halifax, Nova Scotia, in July 24th to the 26th of 2020, and we'll have a ball. We've already booked the rooms, halls, and even a theater for a series of live performances on Saturday night. People you may have known for years will be there, and all new friends, creators and fans alike. Let's get together because there's never been anything like it. This is the world's first conference focused only on the modern audio drama movement. Mad-Con.com. That's M-A-D-C-O-N dot com. The website is up. And reservations are ready for your place in history. Myself, David Alt, Austin Beach, Tanya Malevich, Lothar Tuppen, Matt Leong, Jeffrey Billard, John Bell, and so many more are going to be there. As we fill the ranks, we'll let you know who else is coming. A full weekend, July 24th to the 26th of 2020. Mad-Con.com. Get registered today. There never is another first time. Here's our time. Can't wait to see you there. I'm Jack Ward. Audio drama has been a part of my life now for almost 20 years. The people in it have given so very much to me. And now here's my chance to say thank you. That's why I'm going to mad-con.com and getting my ticket. See you in Halifax. See you in MadCon in 2020. And that's this week's show. If you're someone who likes to listen to more, then why not go all the way back and listen to the first, well, nearly 800 episodes of the Sonic Society feed. Amazing. 800. 800. (laughs) I can't believe it. Sorry, I just got a little off distracted there thinking about the number. (laughs) And be sure to check in this third Thursday now of the month with the Amigos as they examine a classic X-1 episode that Jeffrey Billard has selected For your dining pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, we'll see you next Tuesday when we bring back Narada Radio and Pete Lutz for another fun episode from his players. As well as a short from the Amelia Project. Until then, please send us your thoughts. We love to hear from you. Email us at sonicsociety at gmail.com or send us a message through Sonic Society Facebook or on the Twitter at Sonic Society or Astro Tour 2010. That always sounds very, very majestic. Astro Tour 2010. 10, 10, 10. ten. And if you haven't got your tickets yet, why not head over to mad-con.com and come and enjoy a weekend with some old friends. Or make new ones. Until next week, he's David Alt. And he's Jack Ward. Thanks for joining us and good night. Good night. Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening.
This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Los Angeles, 1935, the heart of the Great Depression, with glitz and glamour right next door to misery and suffering. It's the kind of world where those with money don't want to share it, and those without it have no idea how to get it. It's the kind of world where I'll take a case I'll regret, but will I live with them? I know, Phil, I know it's not that. Just listen to her story. One day I got tired of drinking and poured it down the drain. It was either that or switched to laudanum. I see how you're looking at me, Mr. Marlowe. And yes, I've thought about killing that son of a bitch a million times. That makes this a DA job. I need some answers from you, Phil. What happened in Big Bear? 48 hours and no more, I'll put an APB out for you. Friend or no friend. A friendly word of advice, Marlowe. Stay away from William T. Phillips. The rumor is everyone that gets close to the man seems to disappear or die. You need to learn to mind your business, Marlowe. Being nosy could get you dead. Philip Marlowe is back with a six-part audio drama miniseries called A Man Named Marlowe. Listen and subscribe everywhere you get your podcasts by searching for Breaking Walls or at thewallbreakers.com. That was a good save. Yeah, <laughs> that was very good. We're getting good at this. Yes. <laughs> Hi, this is John Bell. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In my podcast, Bells in the Battery, I usually surpass a thousand words. Why does he? But for every episode, there is also a picture. You mean the itty bitty picture that you see when you bring up the episode? Yes, that's called a thumbnail. They're drawn on thumbnails? But now you can see all the thumbnail pictures in large format by going to the Bells in the Bat Free Gallery. Just go online to thebatfree.com. That's T H E B A T F R Y dot com. And click on gallery. That's G A L L E. I think they can figure that out. You'll see all the pictures for all the episodes that were created by Jeff Music, along with other guest artists like the Lava Lee Brothers and famous animation director Dan Reba. Oh, well, he knows one celebrity and he really wants you to know about it. You'll also see lots of fan art over the years and a few surprises so when you're in the mood for a picture instead of a thousand words especially, especially his, his words, words go to thebatfree.com and click on gallery and be sure to clean your thumbnails before viewing